Hello and welcome to uh, the Kamisela Live from the Kamisela Live from America podcast. Mr. Norm Dorman is here. Hello. 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 The owner of the Kamisela. This is Hatim speaking. And uh, Steve Clubria. Hola. Reporter. And one of our favorite guests is, is one of, uh, you know, he's been a couple of times and he's really one of the best uh, guests we ever had uh, on and off the field. Uh, Mr. Clint Watts, <laughs> he's a former FBI agent. I don't like that part, but he's also a security analyst, uh, MSNBC analyst, and author of Messing with the Enemy. Thanks for having me back. Yes. Uh, this is what, four or five times now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you, you hold the record. Multiple years. Do I hold the record? Uh, I think so. I think I hold the record on Jordan Klepper show as well at two <laughs> not 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 yeah, only, only not only year, that that you know we we actually excited every time you here too. All right. Well, you we know? also had you before it was cool. Yes, like before yes. all these other That's people true. jumped on the Clint train. We're an early Clint adapter. Yeah, adopter. Right. Yeah, but we all knew it from day one. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, but, I didn't know it. That's oh, we we I, did. I was like, mm. yeah, yeah, that was a, a a weird six months. Yeah, a turnaround. All right, did, Clint, did you come here to tell me? That I was right about the FISA Jesus scandal and oh, <laughs> the FBI that I fought with you on for two years. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Go, Norm is never right. Good. Thank God. Did you come here to tell me? Go, go ahead. Um, no, all we right. Can, well, we can talk FISA we, for yeah, a I'm, good hour and a half. The FBI brings bad <laughs> memories to me. So I like to, st- <laughs> to know you after the FBI period. I, I, you know, I really, I, I found, to be honest, I really don't care about what happens in the world. I just care that I get it right. So... If after he killed uh, Qasem Soleimani, mm-hmm. you, yeah. you got to learn uh, his name. Um, Come on. Uh, if I had predicted that Iran would retaliate with a nuclear bomb, I'd be happy if they retaliated with a nuclear <laughs> bomb. Oh, shit. Just so I could be right. So so I've been, I went out on a limb on a few things in the last few years. And one of the, one of the things I really went out on a limb was that I, I thought that this Pfizer that something was wrong with the FBI and the FISA process. You know, I argued with you. You, you know, you know. Before that, it just reminded me of something that Manny used to do all the time. Yeah. Like, what? We have a meeting, me and him and Avan, whatever, and I have an idea, and I tell him like, Manny, Manny what do you Manny think? Manny's my father, the owner, yeah. former owner of the comedy cellar. And he was like, Manny, what do you think of this, this, this? And he looked at me, he's like, This is stupid. What do you think? And he says the idea that he just said. <laughs> and we all go like, Manny, you are a genius. He's like, I know. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> he's either does That's that, brilliant. yeah. He's either does that, or when they say a new idea, he look at Ava. He's like, "Do you know what he's talking about?" And I was like, "She's like, nope." He's like, "That makes three of us," <laughs> which includes oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was funny. I understand why you know I was like that. Uh, anyway, so what? what so what? Do you, what is your takeaway on this uh, FBI? You disappointed in your brothers at the FBI? No, I mean, uh, I I don't see that FISA application being about Trump. This is what I don't understand about the whole thing. Uh, let's go back to what Trump said. Trump said, Trump Towers wiretapped. They've got all my people wiretapped. You know, we heard uh, Manafort's wiretap probably and Flynn and all these guys. All turned out to not be true. There was one person, Carter Page. The other part of it is he was not surveilled while he was on the Trump campaign. He left in September, I think, of whatever year that is, 16. Right, but they got access to all his past emails sure. and, and information. Yeah. Well, look, they... they, they I think... Uh, I don't think the public knows what a FISA is for. Like, I, that is never... Horowitz knows. Horowitz does. Uh, yeah, but I don't think they understand when a FISA is used, which is... For our general listeners, could you... Yeah. 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 So the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act is essentially the ability to do electronic surveillance whenever you think there's a threat from a foreign power or a foreign actor. So usually it's counterterrorism cases. That's where probably the bulk of them have been over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, counterintelligence is another huge part of that. You could look at those cases where you got a foreign element, and the standard of probable cause is lower as well. So like oftentimes in television, people see Title Threes, which is The Wire, the TV show The Wire, and that's going into a criminal case. But when you're looking at a foreign power, it goes to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. They do up an application. And this is the other thing that I feel has co- consistently been miscommunicated, which is it is not an indictment, nor is it a conviction. It is a 
search tool. It mm-hmm. is a way to collect evidence to try and figure out, do you have an investigation here? So it's not unusual. The other thing is you do defensive FISA applications and you do more offensive investigative FISA applications. So you may want to look at, okay, is a foreign power spies from a foreign country or uh, let's say Anwar Aliki, that's a great example, is trying to recruit people. and Maybe they don't really understand what's going on. You want to do sort of a defensive measure. So you want to say, okay, what are they communicating to and why are they doing it? When I read, I was mostly focused on page 196 to about 270 or something like that. Whenever you do a FISA and it goes in and it gets approved, there are predicates. Now, everyone made it about the Steele dossier, which was one of five elements of the application. The question I think ultimately is, yeah, should they have gone back in the renewals every time, and this I agree with you, and said, look, we found nothing to merit what it was laid out in the steel dossier that we put as evidence of it. Or they could have done another thing, which was not include the steel dossier at all. I'm sure they probably regret when, that. When you say no. approved, approved by who? The court? Yeah, the court. So, okay. So what's the problem then? But there's layers of approval when they go through. The other thing is this information then is redacted, and then every 90 days usually mm-hmm. uh, you do an update to get a reauthorization. Rod Rosenstein approved yeah. two of those updates. Okay. Major redacted sections over and over and over again, which means that they showed something that was there. Did they follow all the procedures right? Definitely not. And you can see that as Horowitz goes through and he's got the matrix that's in the backs of it. Um, in terms of procedures, did they update the court whenever they found out, mm. hey, the steel stuff isn't really coming through? No, they didn't do that because that might have changed the opinion of the renewal. And it would have probably changed Rosenstein's opinion as well. He may have had to think about it even differently. Oh, okay. But my point is, is that Page, when I read that, is not really about the Trump campaign. Okay, but... His name James Baker, the, uh, the the FBI counsel. Yeah, I heard him on the Skullduggery podcast saying it, Trump was that we were investigating Trump. That's what it was for. He said that the reason he he was upset with Comey for telling the president that he wasn't under investigation because he felt that Comey wasn't being honest. This is what Baker said, and then Horowitz refers to it as the Trump investigation. I mean, it, I I think that ship has sailed. I I mean. I want to be fully respectful to you because you have more expertise than I do, and you're my friend. But um, it's, I mean, it seems like nobody's saying that anymore. It seems to me pretty much everybody's kind of come clean that, I mean, look, the FBI didn't just leave out what you're saying. They also left out the fact that he was had been cooperating with the U.S. government and with the CIA, and they knew he, in other words, he he was one of us. He he had been helping us. Mm, I didn't read it that way, but well, they one of the one of the things Horowitz took them to task operational for contact is not a was, cooperating witness or someone who's being used as an agent, though. One of the thing, one of the, I don't remember the terminology. One of the things Horowitz mentioned in that long list of how many things that he find that were uh, wrong that they did, it's a, I don't a know. big number like twenty or something, uh, all and and all one hundred percent in one direction. It wasn't like random mistakes. One of the things in that list was that you didn't, they didn't tell the FISA court that, we had a, that the CIA had a relationship with this guy right. and he was helpful to the CIA. That, uh, absolutely. The lawyer who, cha- lawyer who made a change in the yeah. language and the emails. In other words, the lawyers made yeah, a change. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was huge. They didn't say that they found out that Steele had said that his primary contact was unreliable. I mean, this is nuts what they were doing. And, and I, don't, I actually don't believe there's anything but the Steele dossier of consequence to this whole investigation. But worse than that, this is what I was saying. To the whole Russia investigation? To the whole investigation of Trump. Not to, not, not to the whole Russian interference on our election investigation. No. I'm, I'm, well, I guess what I'm saying, and then I'll go back to it, is that no Steele dossier, no Mueller, no, no special counsel. Yes, investigation to Russia interference, but there is no reason. The only reason that we need a special counsel is because this, the suspicion that Trump was involved in this. Yeah, you don't need a special counsel. A special counsel would have never happened if Trump hadn't have fired Comey. True. That whole thing would have gone away. Right, but why, why? No, that's true. But why did Comey want to see to it as a special counsel? Because Comey believed that the Steele dossier was true. I don't know if he did or not. Of course he did. Then if he had to have, otherwise he couldn't have signed off on it in front of the FISA court. No, I, I had testified and been back here same time, yeah, all yeah. before Comey was ever fired, right? And 
I thought the thing would be over by late summer. I thought it would be the Senate Intel no, Committee will you maybe know, not understand my go point. through the investigation. I, I don't see it as being just so, solely about the Steele dossier, which I had been on this podcast before, and I didn't even know what the Steele dossier okay, was. I never heard of it. My point is this. I think that what, Comey was a signature. He signed off on the veracity of the Steele dossier because he had, so he had to believe it in order to present it as evidence, or he committed a crime. So it's not presented as evidence, though. It's used as probable cause to get a search yes, warrant. Yes, but he had to believe that it was true. You can't present something true. to the court. So yes, I'm saying, that's so, correct. So I'm saying Comey believed the Steele dossier as evidenced by the fact that he presented it to a court. He could only do that if he believed it. And if you believe the Steele dossier, it actually says that Trump, that the, it says in there, we have contacts currently active in the Kremlin who say that President Trump is and has been for a long time a Russian asset. It says that in the dossier, it words very close to that. And from that, Comey, who I think was, I think all of them, and I always said this all along too, all acting out of patriotism, like holy fucking shit. I think the president may be a Russian asset. I just got fired. What am I gonna do to save my country? I'm gonna get a special counsel appointed. But I don't think he'd, I don't think he would have had those thoughts and I don't think he would have felt desperate that way if that still dossier hadn't infected his brain. I think it infected everybody's brain so that everything became confirmation bias. Every time he says something conciliatory with the Russians, never mind that Pat Buchanan and, and that wing, that isolationist wing of conservative thought has always felt that we should be more conciliatory with the Russians. All of a sudden, it's con aha, look at him. It's just like it says in the dossier. He's okay. pouring Russian dressing. I feel ah, like why, dossier, is he, why is he using Russian dressing? I feel like that dossier came in way, way late uh, on no, all that it stuff. It came in right, 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 right so, before uh, the election. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's move to something else. Well, you, but, but I'm, you, I you actually asked, well, hold on. No, I am actually <laughs> surprised by, 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 by Clint's answer because... It seems to be now like the FISA court judge has, has gone public saying they're angry and mm -hmm. there's a- Well, they should be. I mean, the lawyer who changed the email about the CIA contact, that might have totally changed that. Or even the agents. Now, remember, the agents would have probably removed it or may have removed it. You don't know what they would have done if they had had that information. I mean, that would have totally changed the context of it if you'd known other parts of the government have you, ever had contact with Carter Page. You know what bothers me about all this- and forgive me, like, like people who come at it where you've always come at it from. It's like, okay, here we are now, three years later. The country has been through a meat grinder thinking that their president was a spy. And it wasn't true. And we suffered greatly for it as a nation. And also in terms of other, even other stupid things that have come out, like calls with foreign leaders coming out and other people not trying. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure I don't even understand all the ramifications, probably uh, NATO allies being afraid to speak frankly to the president because they might believe, you know, I mean, who knows how, how serious this was. And nobody wants to lay the blame. Something clearly went very wrong here. And nobody wants to lay the blame anywhere. It's like, well, 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 whatever, move on to the next thing. No, I think it's really, really serious. I think the whatever went on there uh, should never happen again. It was clear that there was tremendous bias within the FBI, to me, it's clear. These were not random mistakes. And, and even- Against Trump? So against, not, not political bias against Trump because they hated his politics. Yeah, I would say uh, you should do a, a poll in twenty. Yeah, I, I, but I never Trump said Clinton. that. No, <laughs> yeah, because because they were led to believe that he was a threat to the country, and the evidence of that was maybe disinformation. Like it, it came. It nobody. There's nobody who can vouch for it. None of it adds up. Some of it was on. It was facially absurd. Uh, You're they were going to pay about Carter in terms of the dossier. Yeah, the dossier they, like they're going to pay Carter Page right. one one so billion no, dollars. No, the, so, the Russia conspiracy yeah. though yeah. is way more than the Carter Page yeah. FISA application. So you kind of saying the Russia what? conspiracy with Trump? Paul Manafort, we found out from that same thing, was already under investigation and became the campaign manager. Yeah, but he, but none of this, none of the. As he was far as already I know, under investigation. Well, Manafort may have been under investigation, and that would have been good reason to tell Trump. 
you know, your your campaign manager, but I don't think which it, they may have done because what happened? Yeah, but I don't. They, they fired him. To my knowledge, there's there it hasn't been, and we there were so many articles about there's going to be a Trump Tower connection and this connection, and that's yeah. But in the end, I don't think there's one piece of evidence that they actually had that the president was involved in a conspiracy with Russia. Other than, well, Manafort's Manafort was involved with Ukrainians, right? Was it, what's, what's yeah, whatever, whatever he is. But Manafort was Person involved with Person A them. is Konstantin Kilmnik, who is I don't know assessed according to the Mueller report as an agent of the Russians. And so, what was his? How does he figure into all this? He is the right hand man of Manafort. Oh, we know Manafort was dirty. Yeah, sure. But he was. But but Manafort's involvement was that for, was predates him even knowing Trump. He he came into this thing, and and maybe sure. and maybe it may. Like it's totally plausible to me, not knowing any information, that that's why he asked for the job because he wanted to get close to the president. Yeah, he did. Right. So then you, which it, would which would automatically, but if it were Hillary flares, yeah, at right. the FBI where you go, oh my god, this as it guy should. But is coming were, in now, suddenly he's the campaign manager. But if it were Hillary, they would have immediately called up Hillary and said, uh, "Mrs. Clinton, your campaign. We need you to know your campaign manager has been is involved with the Russians. You need to you you need to know that." But, with Trump, they're like, was not oh, Trump's in on it, too. It was too. not isolated to Manafort. Yes, it was. No, who else, it was who not. Else? Papadopoulos, the same time. No, I don't think there's any evidence that Papadopoulos no, was involved with Russians. Trump walked out in July. The FBI, right, is already doing an investigation into all these hacks. Trump walks out and says, Russia, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, be great if you had those emails. No one, no one at that time... He'd ever talked that it was definitely Russia that had taken emails. And the investigation is not laid out there. All they know is Julian Assange is dumping a bunch of emails, you know, out into the open. No, it, it was out there. I remember, I remember seeing that. He, there was rumors, yeah, that it, there it was, was out there. there. That's there why he rumors, said it. but I yeah. mean. And, 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 I mean, I, I, well, I remember seeing that and taking it just as like, yeah, everybody, everybody no. No, yeah, for me, having watched all the Russian influence stuff at my house, the day he walked out there totally changed my perspective on it. I right, accept that. Fair enough. But Hillary did, the 30,000 emails did go missing. It was pretty clear to anybody who understands computers that, that those emails are on some, somebody has them because she had no security on her computer. You know, no serious. And they were talking about Russia having them. And of course, we all wanted to see the emails. And Trump being the <laughs> vulgar guy, you know, I mean, in, in every aspect. You're, 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 not, you're not supposed to say that you really want to see the email. You're supposed to pretend. So my, you're supposed to pretend, I don't want to see the emails. That would be wrong. Blah, blah, blah. But every politician, of course, wants to see the emails. And Trump says, Rush, if you're listening, if you got those emails, yeah. we'd sure like to see them. This is, but this is, this is the confirmation. This is, this is precisely the confirmation bias I'm talking about. Because it's already in our heads that Trump is somehow involved with Russia, this looks like evidence that it's true. I, I, I don't think so. Not at that point. Was Trump involved like with it. Russia? I don't know. Do you have any evidence? I, 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 th I think he analyzed it the last time he was here perfectly that there's four scenarios. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a that range was, of scenarios. Yeah. He, he is either the useful idiot or the compromised guy who's got business dealings and he wants to get along with Putin. I don't think he's a Manchurian candidate. I don't. I also don't think he's a guy who's had strong foreign policy views about Russia and their place in the world since the 1970s. He doesn't so, actually think about it. Yeah, long. so let's let's move because I have a lot of subjects I want to can talk I, to. Can I close with sure. things Go I ahead. agree with Noam? About. Yes, yeah, please. So <clears throat> I think there are two things that happened in the government which really set this whole thing in motion. One, the first thing was the leaks around the Clinton email, which came out of somewhere, which were going into the press, which caused Comey one week out to go and reopen the investigation because of Anthony Weiner's laptop or whatever. That may have changed the course of the election. The second one is everything involving Carter Page's FISA application and all that stuff that came out. I think that was coming out right about the same time as the dossier, or they knew it was coming out. That's the second leak that came out. Both of them should never have happened, and they should be prosecuted, whoever it is. Both of those two should be hunted down because they changed the course. Sure. The first one changed the course potential the election. The second one changed the course of the next presidency meaning that Trump had to deal with all this stuff, and it, it got out into the media and it really spiraled out of it. So I think those two things are critical points at where government personnel didn't fulfill the responsibilities, and it really made a huge impact. I agree. And, you know, this, like, it's so tainted me, this whole chapter. Like, now we hear the Democrats saying that um, 
uh, it's been de- whatever the details are that that you know Biden couldn't have fired the Ukrainian prosecutor to protect Burisma because the Burisma investigation had already uh, been deactivated a year prior, whatever it is. And normally I'd say, oh, okay, you know, but it was just like a year and a half ago they were telling us um, the Nunez memo was all lies and Schiff's memo was accurate. And then, well, you look, I went back and read the Nunez, Nunez memo. There was no lies. I mean, like everything, like he was, he was, he was telling exactly the truth and Schiff knew he was telling the truth. And it's like, so there's just, both sides are guilty to some extent. You can't trust anything anybody says anymore. We've lost all confidence in anything, at least I have lost all confidence in anything I'm told. And that's another big casualty of this sure. Russia thing. You, they've been our newscasters, our journalists, uh, most trusted people we know going out there and, and Brennan from the CIA implying that he had evidence that Trump was a spy. I mean, the list is long. I wish, I wish it all came to me. It was all bullshit. And now they say, okay, okay. Now, but now, but believe us about this. Believe us about even stupid things like the Trump's, which I, I think this is a conspiracy here, like the crowd strike thing. Even that's tough to put out now because you've been lying to us about everything for three years or covering up or whatever it is. And now we're supposed to take your word for it that, well, this really isn't true or this really is true. It, it's such, they did such damage to the country. It's such damage, in my opinion. Very true. And, tr- and Trump does his, his share of damage. We're just talking about the FBI damage, but I mean, Trump with his shenanigans as well. But I don't know. The, the, the FBI really. Yeah, um, we'll see. But but as I said, what really matters most of all is that I that I said it was going. I said that the FBI was going. <laughs> That's all he can. You see, we, he and I had a big falling out over it. One, we at one we could have just summed over, up the last oh, oh, <laughs> minutes. Uh. And this, um, all right, a couple of other things. Uh, the Iran attack. So yeah, we Noam thinks. I'm speaking for you now. That Iran will have some kind of revenge. Sure, I mean no, not that Iran will not, right. I don't, I, you don't think they can or will? They, they're too scared. Trump scared them so much that they would not. Uh, so, so what I think is this, as I said, I think when, when, the, when the guy right next to you is blown into a thousand pieces, you might slow down and start thinking a little bit more yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. But I also understand that he, they, they, there is still pressure probably on the Ayatollah, I'm guessing at this, to not be too soft because then they might, I mean, it's only or something within it. So he's going to have to do some perfunctory. But but here's here's where I don't agree with it. Carefully, but I think and I think he's going to most most importantly, he's going to play for. I don't expect to see anything until after election day because if he thinks there's a chance that President Sanders is coming in, he'd be very happy to wait for President Sanders. Well, well, what I think is like you know, um, it's not you know, uh, revenge is what uh, or pressure is what. uh, making them want to do it. It's hating the United States and part of it is always do terrorist groups and terrorist attack. So this is part of their plan. They're not motivated by just the uh, the hatred or the need to to have revenge right now. You know, I think it's a, it's a long-term thing. Uh, so the U.S. news kind of forgets where this happened, which is in Iraq. Yeah. This is, look, we've been fighting a uh, semi-hot war with Iran for a decade sure. already. By the way, did you know years. Soleimani before this? Because a lot of people didn't know who he was. I knew was. who he was, yeah. Okay. And, I mean... Is he as bad as people? Of course he knows. No, I know. That's Probably, what I'm saying. I mean, uh, by like 2006 or seven, uh-huh. you're fighting a dual war in Iraq, right? Or really three wars. You're fighting the jihadist sort of element. You're dealing with all sorts of insurgents of one type or another that are half, half the time just criminals. And then you're dealing with the Iranian-backed militias, right? So the Iranian-backed militias had steadily grown... Uh, out of Iraq. Yeah. And the Iranians were always going to gain influence there. The Shia are the majority. That's that's just going to happen, right? And and this is the, always the fatal flaw of putting democracy in the Middle East. It's just wh- whichever tribe has the most people wins sure. the vote because everybody in the tribe goes, we're voting for our boss. And they're like, well, there's no like yeah. campaigning, right? So this was going to happen. The, part of the reason it didn't happen sooner was ISIS. We forget that you've got Iran on both sides of the ISIS fight. They're in Syria with Hezbollah fighting. Soleimani's leading that effort, right? He's in Beirut dealing with Hezbollah. Yeah. Where was he flying from? He was flying from one of those regions into Iraq. What has he got there? Shia militias that he's backing. As soon as the, this should be no surprise to anybody, as soon as the 
the ISIS fight declines, the Shia militias are not going to put their guns away, right? And uh, Iran's not going to like let them just demobilize. So this was always going to percolate back up once there's no ISIS that everyone's commonly fighting against. But do you think him as a target is justified or no? Yeah, I mean, well, according to the law, and this gets overlooked in the sort of like media debate, we designated the Quds Force a terrorist group. He's the leader of the Quds Force. Therefore, it's the equivalent of bin Laden or any other terrorist group. Once that happens in the, in terms of that foreign terrorist organization designation. Yeah, but this is our law, not international law. So. Sure, but I mean, it, there's there's no real international No, I understand. Law. I just want to, you know, get the, the pain really picture. Well, this is a, because they made it sound like he's bin Laden. So my question is, was he? Um, Are we better off without him? Sure. At yeah, this, I mean... Look, since 2007, the number of uh, U.S. troops hit with uh, Iranian-supplied uh, IEDs in Iraq, uh, the number of insurgent sort of fights. I know my uh, old infantry company I commanded fought against Shia militias in southern Iraq. Um, yeah, the, we were fighting an insurgency there. Whether some people you know, want to say we're not, that's beyond the point. I think my issue with the Soleimani killing is... It fits in no greater greater strategy for like what the hell we're doing still yeah. in Iraq. Uh, why do we have these contractors still going there? What are we paying for them for? What are we really going to do against Iran when we have no international coalition now? Okay. Right, like we've lost support. Uh, sanctions are working. We are squeezing uh, the Iranians really hard, which is part of the reason why they're picking up their aggression in other places. And in terms of will they retaliate? Sure, but they're not going to do it in. Uh, Let's go kill a bunch of Americans today in a conventional strike. They're going to do it uh, asymmetrically in two ways. Cyber and cyber attacks have already picked up, and so that's already going to happen. That was always the part of the Iran deal that was never discussed much. Is mm -hmm. Part of the Iran deal was also they're going to lay off our banks and DDoSing and cyber attacking our infrastructure and things like that. So that's not really discussed. But they tend to use some sort of terrorist approach or use a militia as a proxy. Yeah. So think back to Kobar Towers, which people forget about in Saudi Arabia. That was tied back. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I think this is Iranians. what they're going to do. They're going to attack Saudis and Iraqis, not Yeah. US. We, the way it gets carried in the news is like us versus Iran. Actually, it's a regional conflict where a lot of different actors are at play. We made a very strong move. It did not provoke a war the way a lot of people were always saying, oh, if we do this, then it'll start a war. Yeah. Okay, can I, can, Iran can, I stop, will, can I stop about that? Yeah. Because this is what I found ridiculous. What, why, how could anybody think this is going to start a war? What war? If we, in 48 hours, everything they have would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. We don't need to occupy Iran. True. That's it. Like, what, what, what war? Yeah. I don't think people believe there's a war. I think I'm the media like, was no, trying. I think uh, the first 48 hours was just overwhelming. There's going to be a war. And I was like, why do you, why do you think we're going to immediately go to toe-to-toe -to -toe in a conventional conflict yeah. with Iran? I didn't see that happening. Every, every, they, 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 they do something like over the line. Every oil refinery in Iran is gone. Every ship in the water is sunk. Every airplane. But what is that line? What's that? What is that line? I don't know. A kill a prime, blow up some, blow up a room full of Americans. I don't know. Some, if some, they killed fifty Americans in those missile strikes, then we would immediately yeah. retaliate. But, but sure. retaliate doesn't mean that doesn't encompass taking out all of their oil. Yeah. No. Yes. What I'm saying, it wouldn't be a war. We would just destroy their entire like he, infrastructure. Yeah. But what, what's everybody worried about? And and you know, this is the thing with Iraq. The argument was, and it was true, that we unleashed a hornet's nest. Mm -hmm. Iran already is a hornet's nest. Like, what are we worried about? Uh, unleashing uh, worse from Iran, more support for terrorism. Like, like if if if, if Iran turns into anarchy, what's, what what do we care? Yeah, well, I think there's two the fundamental. Price of oil is going to go up. Great, we we're the biggest producer of oil in the world now. We'll make a lot of money from that. There's two fundamental flaws with the whole Iran strategy as it is right now. One, Americans don't care about Iran. But every other four, every four years, right? Like as soon as a president yeah. flips over, then suddenly we care. So like I remember uh, when I was uh, how should I say this? Studying Iran uh, a decade ago. Studying in Iran or no? Just studying I haven't seen Iran. Iran. Okay. It was during the Bush years, <laughs> right? So they, there was a drumbeat of it, and and then as soon as the Obama administration came in, it was like less about Iran, you know, and it was more about withdrawal. And that's what's perplexing about Trump is because it's like it's not clearly stated. Like, I'm all for getting as mm -hmm. many troops as possible out of Afghanistan. I'm also not delusional that 
they're all coming home because they're not. They're gonna something's gonna stay there for a while, or at least in the region, to do counterterrorism. And same with like the stupidness of the Democratic debate where they're like, "Oh, we're just gonna pull all the troops out of the Middle East." I'm like, "Okay, that's probably not gonna happen." There's a lot of American companies over there, and there's interest, and there's still oil. And how can like they that. say that after five hundred thousand Syrians died the last time they decided that? Yeah, what the it's, it's, that's not gonna people. happen. I don't it's, think they're gonna be, they believe it or they're gonna do it. They're just saying it because for the sake of debating. That's it. Saying why they think it's why is it still popular within their party to say that? But anyway, go ahead. But I think the bigger issue is that the U.S. has no strategic vision for what it is in the world anymore. Meaning that part of the reason why Trump can't do any of this stuff is because he won the minority vote. (laughs) He did not win the popular vote, right? Like Bush had the support of the American people when he invaded Iraq. He was wrong, but okay, he had the support. Obama, when he wanted to do the surge or whatever it was, he still had the support of the people. There is no support behind behind this, and you don't have allies and partners at this point, right? Like, they've drifted away, and you see that with Pompeo. He'll kind of skip around the Middle East, and everybody goes, okay, great seeing you, you know, and but no I, one's on board. I have a, I have a less charitable view of that. Um, Trump could easily have the support of the American people on yeah. this if the Democrats weren't automatically going to oppose him on any thing he does and, when, and, and i'm sorry and and the the evidence for that is what we just spoke about how could they think we were going to war like not one democrat was able to say and i just well, want to add to your point to that also the foreign support i think saudi arabia egypt i think they really really brought trump like people don't realize that i think more than bush like Bush, though, is a hesitant a little bit, but these people, it's crucial for well, them. Bush would talk about democracy, and that really gave him the will. Yeah, right? <laughs> because they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody like, really, yeah. We're all about fighting Iran, but we don't want to vote, right? Sure. So, like, Shut up, George. Well, right? I- <laughs> Whereas Trump is not, right? There's no, like, let's promote democracy around the Middle East. No, because in Egypt, if he, like, the president of Egypt without the support of Trump, specifically Trump, it's, it's gone. Same thing with Saudi Arabia. So, so anyway, uh, let's jump to... The third your expertise, with expert every thing we talked about so far, but the um, the hacking of the Saudi prince to uh, the Amazon uh, uh, boss phone. is that is that tr- so? What, what, can you give us the uh, everybody knows the story? Yeah, so I think it's actually the most interesting story in the last couple of weeks. Saudi, uh, they don't have things internally, right? So they don't they're not like the Russians or the Chinese or even the Iranians. They don't have their own hackers and they don't have their own like troll farm. They really can't do it. So they outsource it all because they got tons of cash. Mm -hmm. And so what do they do? They go to a company that's in Israel. Israel has the best uh, cybersecurity and hackers. Uh, A company is called NSO Group. And the allegation is they bought this software, this malware called Pegasus. And the way Pegasus is explained is it can be delivered to your phone. Uh, In this case, it was WhatsApp. And as soon as it arrives on your phone, it can tap into everything on your phone except your your voice calls back and forth. Everything that you're doing on the phone, and it can extract all the data out of it. So, without you even opening it, without you even opening it, which is like ne- way next level, super fucking, expensive. Fucking Israelis. And <sighs> I was gonna say you got there before me. Uh, Brett yeah, Ste- so, Brett Stevens was right. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're incredible, and but they're also, I mean, they also have the best cybersecurity firms in the world, like over there, like tech companies and stuff, and lots of U.S. companies do it. So it's not like the whole country; it's just like. A couple companies that are over there have got great skills, and they charge a fortune, and they yeah. sell to anybody. So uh, that's the point. They sell yeah. to anybody. They don't have morals. <laughs> that's very yeah. Jewish. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> they're just like, like, oh, oh, who's going to pay to anybody? Yeah, I mean they're selling <laughs> to Saudi. I mean, just the whole who's idea. Who's going to pay? You know, they would immediately have a nuclear <laughs> <loved> conflict. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's very true. <laughs> so, um, what happens? Yeah, I think the timeline is really bad and if we didn't have an impeachment going this would be the number one story at the white house you know today so so right now is that proven that there is this program exists and yeah, it's on this been, company so it came out uh after Khashoggi was killed yeah that he and many other dissidents uh from saudi had this tracking malware on their phones uh there's a group called citizen lab in toronto they discovered it and sort of like put out a huge report about it and they're like no antivirus is going to pick up on this. This is what this thing does. Um, and there's some other software out there that does this as well. So Trump meets with MBS on mm-hmm. March 20, 2018. March 21, 2018, MBS sends a invitation to a dinner to Jeff Bezos. 
I think it's like April 4th or 5th. To be fair, not to him, to everyone in the Silicon Valley too. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, April 4th or 5th, uh, MBS meets Jeff Bezos and they exchange phone numbers and now they're on WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. You know, within a couple months later, he gets this weird video that's encrypted. He doesn't understand what it is. Sometime after that for months, they're extracting everything mm-hmm. on his phone and he's in an affair and all his secrets and dirty laundry are out there. Uh, five months you know, after this exchange, Khashoggi's killed. Mm-hmm. Um, in the intervening months, we find out, okay, Khashoggi was being tracked, and there's all sorts of malware on these dissident phones, and uh, there's these social bots showing up on Twitter, which are smearing Amazon, smearing Bezos. Suddenly, a National Enquirer gets this hot take about all these pictures. Maybe Jeff Bezos is nude. We don't know. And so Bezos kind of comes out with it. They don't really know all the details. Then uh, the DOJ in November uh, charges three guys for spying for Saudi Arabia by infiltrating Twitter, which allows you to infiltrate in the back end, possibly of the company, read direct messages. They set up 88,000 Twitter accounts to do some spamming about how terrible Amazon is. Uh, It turns out that one of those guys tried to go then and work at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is like insider, like you're sending spies into multiple companies. And then today, you know, Bezos doesn't go to the U.S. government. He goes to the U.N. Yeah, that was my next question. Yeah, Why yeah. is that? So I think Bezos thinks he can't trust the U.S. government or that they won't do Well, something. of course not. Trump doesn't even allow, what, the Washington Post into the White House anymore. Yeah. But, but, but it's, it's not also, like the U.N. Vi- like solved anything ever. No, but he has more traction. We have some e- life there. evidence right here that they didn't solve anything. And Bezos, <laughs> timed, it, uh, Bezos timed it during the impeachment when we're already That's talking about funny. foreign influence in the U.S. And so, you know, he dropped So what, the, what, the, what did the, the prince of Saudi Arabia say? Did he admit it? Oh, he denies it. He says, no, no, that didn't happen. You can't prove it. There's no evidence of this. And... Mm-hmm. That's kind of how it'll land, just kind of like the Khashoggi thing, unless the U.S. Intel community. But the U.S. Intel community did an assessment of Khashoggi. Yeah, said, yeah, we think he did it, and the White House said, no, we're not talking about it. So, I think nothing will happen. But I, uh, this, uh, you know, MBS is the biggest, most high-profile case. But in the UAE, they had this thing called Project Raven, where they hired a bunch of NSA hackers. Yeah. And they were doing counterterrorism, and then they realized they were starting to get like a bunch of names that didn't look like they were terrorists anymore. Yeah, you know they were buying software from different groups, um, and the two of the people that were on that that were Americans, you know, have come out and done interviews and said this is what's going on. Like we're just all getting hired by every rich regime in the world to go and train them on how to do this stuff. So it's it's interesting. Like the Russians kind of built all this stuff out, you know, and were really smart and aggressive. Mm-hmm. And now you're seeing everybody go. I want that too. How can I just buy, right. you know, whatever that is, and I'll, I'll just do the same thing? And they're outsourcing it, which is totally different. But same, same objective, same smear campaigns, and everything. Uh, yeah. But that what's interesting. This scenario came up when I was at the Aspen Security Forum, and I asked the guy, the FBI National Security Branch mm-hmm. head. I said, "Okay, I'm a U.S. citizen. Uh, I get targeted by a foreign country. Which is happen. I know who it is." Yeah. And uh, I come to you and I say, are you going to charge them with a crime? And the U.S. government is, their stance is we protect .mil and .gov, but not .com. Yeah. Tom Bossard had said that. Even right. though the .gov is cheaper than .com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you got hacked before from Russia. Yeah, they, well, the think tank I was at did. And they just had the Iranians hit them too. Hmm. The Iranians uh, made a fake FPRI-security.org website and wrote fake articles and everything, sent it in to... Uh, DC, right when all the Soleimani stuff was kicking off, and then uh, on YouTube they were showing the fake website for yeah. FBI. So, like you being an expert, in another word, you can never protect anything. Right? It's getting something that way. eventually is going to happen. Well, what's interesting is like the U.S. government used to be the state of the art guys that made all this stuff and like had the best capabilities in the world, and now with cyber, artificial intelligence, uh, this influence stuff, not anymore. It's corporations that you know, have all the power in the space. And the U.S. government kind of like, FBI agents will show up and be like, so something bad happened. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, like, can you help us? This happened with the phone, right? Yeah. The Saudi uh, shooter down in Pensacola. Uh-huh. We want you to open the phone. And Apple's like, we're not going to do it. You know, I remember the first, uh, the very first time that you were here, you said that you predicted that the next war attack right. will be cyber through the electricity wires and all that. Yeah, remember? you know, they're doing the air gap stuff now where they can jump over gaps in terms of electronic devices if they're close enough. You're seeing uh, companies. I, I mean, really, I don't see it as like nation states anymore. I see it as like oligarchs, right? I mean, when you look around the world, Putin, 
allegedly the richest man in the world, authoritarian. Xi Jinping, right there with him, right? Authoritarian, tons of money, MBS, tons of money. Nothing now since we're talking. You know, if you look at Trump, he wants to be. That goes without saying. Wants to be those guys, but he's just a lot lazier. He doesn't have as much money as them, and he actually doesn't have as much power because he has to go through impeachment and all these sort of things, right? So, like, when you look at who's moving, uh, man, the oligarchs in Russia are blowing it out in Africa, you know, right now, just seizing different resources and assets and the same was kind of happening for the chinese in the virtual world like with artificial intelligence so you think we're going to be hacked the next election um uh, i know you're working on a project as well do you want to yeah, do you want to tell the uh, listeners yeah so we we watched russia iran china um i mean it was very obvious they were going to probably hack burisma because the u.s can't defend burisma right it's like in ukraine it's a natural target the russians were talking they've been talking about burisma since april pretty much nonstop and in their overt coverage. So it's not surprising. The Iranians, you know, are hyper negative on Trump and very aggressive. They tried to, Microsoft claims they tried to hack into the Trump organization. Not surprising. What I find interesting is China because they just really don't seem to care mm-hmm. <laughs> about the election. They're just kind of like, we'll deal with whatever, but they're worried about stuff like Huawei uh, in terms of tech competition Uh, the word oh, H U W E I H U A W E I, which is to them, they're oh, fighting okay. an economic war against the United States, and uh, they're winning because this is where alliances really matter. I was in Europe, and I was like, "Well, you know, Huawei is China, you know, surveilling." And this German guy turned to me, he goes, "Well, why why should we uh, pay twice as much to have you spy on us when we can pay half as much to have China spy on us? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Again, Jewish uh, guy. <laughs> no, no. You made a lot of Jews in your life. And the, and the TikTok thing, right? Is yeah. The so new... TikTok, you know, is social media is like super cool thing, but you don't know media? where the Chinese, data goes. Right? It's probably going... Yeah, it's yeah. Chinese developer. And in artificial intelligence, they're absolutely going to kick our ass. I mean, just kill us, you know, over the next decade. They've pretty much cut off with us just in three to four years. And they have unlimited data. No one's worried about privacy there. Yeah. Right? Data is the oil for artificial intelligence. The more data you have, the more fuel you got for that. They're hiring up uh, you know, AI scientists, even from the United States and around the world, and bringing them to China. So now they've got the mechanics that can make all this stuff work. And when you, you, know, you just look in terms of infrastructure over the rise, and if they build out Belt and Road Initiative, Huawei, ZTE, Uh, TikTok and all these applications, yeah. suddenly, I think the defining moment of when China beat us was when LeBron James walked out and said, hey, hey, you leave yeah. Hong Kong alone. Yeah, I'm super woke here in the U.S., but you, know, you leave those protesters alone. That shows the power of them to shape the world, right? Yeah. Like everybody wants to be in the Chinese you know, market. They want Chinese businesses, stuff like sure. that. Yeah. It's a good time to live in Yemen. <laughs> Nobody hacks anything there. Yeah. But, uh, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I don't think China's gonna. Uh, you. I, I want to hear uh, what you're gonna say because I'm gonna remind you that you said the opposite. You don't think China's gonna. What did I say the opposite? I don't I, think I remind you later. Over the US but finish or anything like fi- that. Fi- finish no, the sentence. I think that. You said I don't think that China. I I I have a strong belief that a totalitarian system will always trip over its own we'll fail over feet, time. will always fail. I, I was really uh, very uh, taken or very, uh, I, I thought that the docuseries Chernobyl mm-hmm. was really profound because it really showed how within a totalitarian system, even with best scientists, they had, you know, these are not stupid people. Everything was about covering their tracks. Uh, nothing was about truth. They would they were sooner let 100,000 people die than admit that the radiation levels were above a certain yep. point. I mean, you, you, did you watch it? I mean, mm-hmm. it's- So it, I thought it was But we didn't have the technology then to see from above. No, the point is that this is the nature of, like in the United States, there's actually- Uh, inspections and meritocracy and and uh, you have to be right and if you're right you're promoted and it's and there's some nepotism but it's not nepotism like it was, but you can't pay off the cops when you get pulled over no but even within time, within anyway. a laboratory but there it's all about you know telling the dictator what he wants to hear and covering your tracks and and it's it's I just don't have faith that that kind of a it system c- it come to my mind now when he ever, says like why the missile is not pointy did you see that movie 
a di- Borat, dictator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think that um, that can. I, I don't, like I said. I, I think they'll they'll trip over their own feet, and I don't even actually see them as. I mean, they have a lot of money, but we're the market, and if and if China dropped off the planet Earth, then some other poor country in Asia would start producing cheap shit. So, so you don't think that uh, that China can someday? You predict that China one day will. Win, win the war. I, I think when their consumption turns internal instead of external for trade, right? Which are uh-huh. getting closer all the time, that will change it. Um, in terms of the technology, yes, because they don't have to deal with public pushback or regulation or regulatory yeah. problems or data freedom, those sorts of things. Well, I, I remind you of uh, the episode two points. But wait, but, I, the last thing I wanted to say was that also at some point, as these countries become affluent, I mean, they think they can lock it down and they can cut off the internet. They're going to want to be free. They're going to throw off these chains at some point. You're not going to have a super rich, affluent country with, where um, with the total with 1984 type government and and do it happily. I don't believe that. Anyway, go ahead. Um, oh well, well, it didn't work in Iraq, did it? Um, so two things. Uh, the episode was uh, when we had the uh, astronaut. The uh, space, uh, you know, uh, chief NASA guy. NASA guy. You know, he's uh, he runs this space station. Uh, and there was two points. One, uh, we were talking about um, that the U.S. was the first one to, uh, to 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 go to the the, the moon. And Noam made a point. It's like if we lose that, U.S. will never be the first. If if the U.S. is not first in everything, we're gonna lose that war. Remember that. I didn't. We weren't talking about a war. What I did, uh, not, not a war, but I'm yeah. saying like in terms it, of achievements, yeah, what, achievement. What, what, what but I, same thing with the war. So we have to be first in everything. No, what, That's why we're investing in a lot of things. What What I said was, it's kind of what you said. What I said was that what people, I think it's somewhere we were even talking about Trump, like make America great again. And yeah, it was about yeah. Trump. Uh, and I and I and I always said that that a lot of people wanted to say that that meant you know bringing back Jim Crow or some ridiculous things. But I had to always admit that kind of did reverberate. With me, and I'm that, uh, you know, it was like 15 years before we could replace the World Trade Center when we had built the Empire State Building in 13 months. Yeah. 13 months they built the Empire State Building, and we were 15 years or so, or 12 years, still, still no Freedom Tower. And that people who thought that this stuff didn't matter, I said, as soon as China is the first one to land a man, on Mars or something sure. like that, then all of a sudden we're going to realize, oh, it really does matter. It, there was a time when if it was happening, it was happening in America. Yep. There, there was another point also. And, that, the- and that's, that was tremendously valuable as a glue. It, it's like it, it made people proud of the country. It changed the psyche of the country. It, it, at a time when we're all coming apart with identity politics and... and um, you know, immigration and racism and all, and all the stuff, all these things that, that uh, tear us apart. We don't have even these national accomplishments. To, we don't have shared experience. To, to take pride in together. So yeah. that's what I was saying. Well there, well, there is another point also in another episode about space as well, you know, and I want to take you take uh, on it. You know, uh, they said, the guest said that the difference when um, with the American uh, projects versus China and Russia is China and Russia try to do the they, they try to invent something quickly and try it right away. America has to go safety first. You have to make sure that this is safe. Sure. So so the race is not on the same league, you know what I'm saying? So one day, they're going to try something. It's going to work. Sometimes it's going to blow up, you know. Uh, this is the same in warfare. America won't accept one So I think it's the same thing with the, with the right? internet, yeah. yeah. But China will lose a thousand and not bad enough. Well, didn't right? Mao say that China's greatest natural resource is its people? Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they can afford to, you know. So it actually comes back. So I, so I double checked. I was right. The Empire State Building was built in one year and forty five days. True. In using nineteen thirties technology, this is, it's it's quite a building, right? This is stunning. They can do that. They could probably build an Empire State Building in eight months in China. 
given given what you're just saying, like yeah. they, don't, they don't need any regulations, they don't, they don't regulations, need any environmental yeah. impacts. They just fucking build. Well, it. yeah, the pyramids are actually kind of even further. That was away. built by Egyptians. Yeah, but by mm-hmm. Egyptians. Mm-hmm. Like, how many people died during the making of that? Why you were incredible, there? I've been there. So, so you have to bring Egypt and that people dying there for no reason. Yeah, but I don't even know if that many people would die building. No, they didn't it today. die. No, it. no. So that's what my tour guide right. told me anyway. I'm talking about the, He's trying to get building money. something like the Empire State Building today. True. Even building fast, they have all sorts of safety yep. uh, equipment and safety procedures. I'm just saying the the idea that a uh, that we've kind of gotten used to the idea that oh, if you want to build a building, that it's takes years. Dangerous. Well, that, it only takes years because we've put all these roadblocks yeah. in our own way. Well, it, well it, that's uh, my point. Is like we have to have the regulation, but not to the extent that we have in it right now. I mean, you're a business well, owner. Trump is pulling back on that. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I mean, one of the good things he's done. This is one of the things that except uh, for some of the environmental stuff. Except for some right. of the environmental stuff, maybe. Oh. Well, I mean, if. This is fuel see, consumption standard. No, I mean, this, see, this is going back to this is going back to what I was saying before. Yeah, of course, if it's hurting the environment, it's wrong. I actually don't trust anything I hear anymore in terms of is it really hurting the environment as they say he's hurting the environment. N- I don't know. Not to mention, like, there's parts of this world. I mean, I travel a lot. I know you do too. You know, uh, you know, it's worse. You know, okay, so whatever but, work we do in one place, hold on. It's I got. Taken- I, I got to say something because this because this is perfect. It's, I read Tyler Cowen on this yesterday. Yeah, Trump may have hurt the environment with some environmental regulations pulling back on, maybe. Elizabeth Warren wants to get rid of fracking. Yeah. That would lead to more greenhouse gases than any regulation Trump ever conceived of pulling back on. I mean, this would just, it would just be like more oil, more coal. Right, where natural gas produced from fracking is is the well, the least she's the, not least, win. Um, the least the uh, least carbon intensive. Well, or, isn't she also calling for greater wind power and solar? There's no such thing, thing as that. The point is that she wants to eliminate fracking. Do you think? But they, she will not be attacked for her damage to the environment the way Trump will be. Yeah. And this is and this, she's and not this president. Is why, this yeah. is what, what? No, even if she is president. There's not going to be. It's just like the classic thing. Like when a Republican is is mayor, you hear all about the homeless people. When a Democrat is mayor, they don't they don't really do many stories about the about the homeless. This is this is true, right? Yeah. But with the environment stuff, yeah. I mean, I think Bloomberg and Yang are the only ones who even acknowledge that we need to build nuclear power plants. Yeah. There is nothing but nuclear power. They claim that the Earth is going to end in 12 years or 11 years, right? Well, and, we're planning in 10. What? Nothing. And we have no technology now ready to go to stop this apocalypse. Oh, actually, we do. It's nuclear. No, no, no. We don't want to use nuclear. We want to. We're just going to play this chicken game. Hopefully, just in time, solar power will be able to run the world. But wait a second. We have nuclear power now, and we actually have pretty good electric cars. You make the electricity in the nuclear power plant, charge the cars, can run the factory. And why don't we just do this in the meantime? And then the smart Israelis and the smart Chinese can develop the, the alternative sources of energy. And then when we're ready, we'll switch over to the alternative sources of energy. Maybe we'll save the planet. No, no. Well, nuclear. isn't the argument that and this you're, is considered to be intelligent? Yeah, but you're relying on that same uh, series of institutions and laws and uh, bureaucracy that built that can't make a building in a year and a no, half. No, what I'm saying is I I listen. I'm saying well, you know I don't even know if they really believe that the 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 planet is in the jeopardy that they say it is. Like if I told you that your kid is going to die in five years, they're working on a drug. We think, we think they'll get it. We have something now. It's, it's not ideal, but it'll keep her alive. No, no, I don't want what you have now. I'll wait and see if they develop that drug or not. But, but it might be too late. She might die. And, and actually every year she gets worse and, she, and you can't roll it back. Whatever damage is done, it, no, it makes no sense. If you really yeah. believe the planet's going to end, you, you know the, the, what can we do today? Oh, we, ha- we have a technology. Yes, there's some risks to it. Maybe some people will die. But you know, you're not going to have a, a, a... You know, a, speaking a, of Hiroshima. experience, his point is right. There is... Like I have some medication that you know you have to order from other countries because it's not allowed here. The, the, mach- the very machine that I have was invented in Israel. That's uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Of course. Uh, but uh, but, the same but guys it took. That but it made took the malware for yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it took five years to be uh, to be okay in the U.S. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that amount it saves so many lives. You know, so that's that's my point. Is like. I think we are the worst enemy of ourselves with a lot of regulation, more than it should, caring about 
things that really, like you said, maybe it's right, not right. No, but you, you, just so you understand, Stephen, if you say so, the reason we're not doing nuclear is not because regulations are in the way. Elizabeth Warren is saying, I yeah. is not saying, I want to build nuclear, but these no, I didn't say that. What I'm saying is that, is that uh, these unreliable institutions and regulations and whatever people are saying or i imagine they're saying uh that a nuclear a series of nuclear power plants is never going to be run efficiently enough for us to be able to sleep well at night because there's always such a danger of a meltdown compared to what i don't know yeah but that's the thing no but, it's but the I same thing with electricity listen nuclear power is all over europe yeah it's pretty safe right. but there has to be some kind of rationality almost entirely powered by so, nuclear, something right? something like very that. close yeah, yeah the o- the only the only problem they have with nuclear when it's when it's uh, for weapons when you're de- trying to develop something else so back to the election uh what about impeachment if- we're going to talk about that too, but well, since Wayne's saying all night, Clint's probably <laughs> burned out on that. Talking about uh, uh, I got that midnight to one, so yeah, no, we'll be, we'll be done. I'm fine. I got so one. yeah, uh, uh, quickly the it, you know the election. Do you think we we can be hacked again? Uh, sure. I and do. by hacked you, uh, we we're, talk, we're, we're talking we're, about influencers. Two, two kinds. Yeah. Two kinds of hacking. One is hacking to power influence, which is like the DNC, John Podesta's emails, all that sort of stuff. Uh-huh. Um, but that's part of the campaign anyway. They've they've already tried to do it with like the Burisma kind of stuff, yeah. but it's different this time. I think there's so many domestic actors that are already in this game okay. in terms of social media influence and conspiracies and stuff. I mean, just QAnon alone is larger than it. I don't I don't know what a foreign country could do on the influence base. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second part of hacking is like election infrastructure, right? Like voting machines. Is that the, possible? The rolls. Yeah. But it's uh, not electricity, right? Well, it's not electricity. No, this it's is not is internet. No, this right? is like two parts. One, hitting the voter rolls. You know how people sign up. So yeah. like in Georgia, for example, people showed up. The rolls were messed up. Showed some people had voted. Some people hadn't voted. Some people weren't on the rolls. They couldn't figure out whether people had uh, voted one time or not. Okay. They had to go back to paper then no one's really sure if the paper was counted. So that would be bad. Um, the other part is actually going in and changing votes in a machine. So the Russians did that in Ukraine. You know, many years ago, they changed the votes. But unfortunately for them, they aired their fake results before the Ukrainians actually aired their own results. And somebody was like, hey, huh. how did they know what the vote account was? And they figured it out. The they winner correct, of the lottery. They, is- correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you have the number five. And they go, how did they know we drew Wait five? A second right here. <laughs> Again. So could they do that? Yeah. But I think, look, something's changed. Uh, General Nakasone at National Security Agency, they are. Wasn't that the, the, the building in, in Die Hard? Uh, not gonna tell me. That's funny. Um, you know, actually, it might be. In 2018, they uh, turned the troll farm offline. Uh-huh. You know, on election day, according to the Washington Post, they're doing counterattacks and stuff now. So, if you're Russia, you're like, do I really want to change the votes in one machine? And I'm willing to take this cyber counterattack, right? I think the bigger issue is the conspiracies. I mean, I don't know if you watched that uh, Richmond, you know, gun march or whatever. Uh, no, I was most worried about those guys, those kinds of characters. Some of them in, the, in those protests showing up to polling places if the vote vote didn't come out their way because they thought the election was rigged or there's yeah. voter fraud. And that misinformation around it mostly comes from inside the United States now. It's not coming from overseas. Four or five years ago, you know, Russia was just pushing it hard, and they're going to push it too. But now there's so many people in the U.S. So I don't know what. Russia or China or Iran would do that we're not doing to ourselves at this point, which kind of leads into impeachment. Sure. You know, like what what could they actually do? Um, and if, in terms of defenses, they're all arrayed on foreign actors, yeah, and very few are arrayed to defend against like domestic actors for the most part. So impeachment. How, how how much of the Russian uh, um, plan of aggression against the United States over the last few years? stems from uh, our sanctions and our reaction to Ukraine and Crimea? Uh, hugely. I mean, Russia's strategy has always been, whether it's Soviet Union or Russia, if you go back to the Cold War with the march of communism, was to keep pushing until we would meet them halfway, essentially, and deter them and sort of establish a line. Um, they saw Crimea. Obama administration didn't react. And they said, okay, then it's Donbass, Right. They move into there. Then it's Syria. Then it's, let's go after these elections. You know, UK, US, France, Germany, and now it's the Balkans, uh, Africa, 
places like that. Speaking of, well, well, but that's not what, that's an interesting answer actually, but that's not what I meant. But now I'm rethinking the question. But uh, what I'm saying is that if we hadn't been fucking around in Ukraine in their backyard and we hadn't gotten to our situation where we have these sanctions, which are, are a, a trap for us as well, because they never leave. We've talked about this on the show. They're never leaving Crimea ever. No. So if we're going to have sanctions until they leave Crimea, it's sanctions till the end of time. Yes. So we have this permanent sore spot we've created with them. Permanent. And their natural urge is to get even with us. And they can't get even with us militarily so easy. So it's, it's one way is to just start fucking around in our elections, spreading disinformation, causing mischief. Mm, I don't think it was in response to the sanctions. They definitely had somebody. I mean, that's a written down doctrinal approach from the 80s that they developed when they knew they couldn't win on the battlefield. So there's no... And they've just elevated... I mean, Putin was trained in it as a KGB agent. There's no scenario that if we had... Uh, if we had found a way to be closer with them, that we would have a, a warmer relationship or less of a... We kind of have a cold well, they, war. They said, they said the same thing about Iraq and Afghanistan. And all the, if we have not been there, you know, and from other different kind of... There were no terrorists, but it's... I no, think, uh, I, I mean, no. I don't think people listened enough to what Putin was saying. And this goes to both Obama and Bush before him, right? They always trying to reset with Russia. Putin said a lot of Russian people were left or abroad whenever the Soviet Union fell. And, you know, I'm going to restore Russian as Russia. And they don't necessarily look at themselves as a border around yeah. little lines. They see themselves as where there are Russians all around the world. D didn't and they speak to them in that way. And so I think he was going to try and reestablish that. He's definitely going to try and reestablish Ukraine. He's going to hold Syria, no matter what. They need it for yeah. naval purposes on, on the Med. Mm -hmm. So some of these things, he's not going to give them up. And when he sees us... Basically saying, we're not going to do anything to you. He's like, I'll keep pushing. Now, what happens when President Sanders takes over? I mean, does that scare the shit out of you in terms <laughs> yeah. of the I mean, I, bad actors are going to do? I watched uh, the first hour of the Democratic debate last week, and it was the first time they talked about foreign policy at all. And they talked about fringe issues. Like, in my opinion, that Iran and North Korea are, are two big topics on foreign policy is like, Let's really sweat the small stuff. When you have big, big things, you know, changing. Um, climate change is not our number one national security threat. Uh, adapting to what is already going to happen, which is massive climate change, is just how the battlefield will lay out right over time. We're not going to stop it. The world is not going to stop. It's too late. So, yeah, we should do as much as we can to slow it, and we want to improve the environment, and we should convert to internally supplied energy. We are an oil exporter build a refinery so we don't have to import from afar. I mean, there are lots of things we can do. Uh, in terms of what is our vision for the world, the idea that we're... I, the dumbest democratic idea I've heard consistently from all of them is, as soon as we get elected, we're going to go back and establish our alliances with our allies. And then we're going to go, you know, establish... No, no, there's no rewind in 2016. Our allies in, you know, the European Union, they are pissed at us. Uh, other allies in the regions, they are not happy with us. They can't trust us because on a coin toss, it'll be a Democratic one time or a Republican the other, and they have totally different views. Yeah. And the world is changing, right? If we wanted to, if we were really smart about it, like you talked about, a, a guy argued with me. He was like, well, you know, the refineries and this and that, and well, you can't convert or whatever. I was like, if we wanted to, we could sole source our energy 100%. We just don't, right? No one's laid out a vision and said, hey, we don't want to deal with Saudi, Iran, or any of these Middle Eastern countries yeah. anymore. We don't need them. We're an oil exporter. Build the refineries. Get us to light crude. In the meantime, everyone, solar panels. Where I live, the guy's building his own, own solar array. He's going to be self-powered up on top of the hill upstate. Great. Look, I know it's on the fringes. Nuclear. Let's get to nuclear. We can do that in two, three years, right? That's a vision. That's energy resetting everything. In terms of artificial intelligence, hey, everybody, uh, you're sharing all your data. I know you're worried about the government having it, but uh, every company in the world already has your data. <laughs> we can come up with some protections for this so that we are an AI superpower because we're going to want to do that. right? Like We could do these things, but there's no vision. And, and when you listen to them about foreign policy, we're going to pull all the troops out. No, we're not going to pull all the troops out of everywhere. We're going to need to be able to project power around the world. No, we're not going to go back to our allies and suddenly have a big NATO conference and then talk about 
diplomacy leading in terms of our power. That's not going to happen either. So what, what's your prediction for the candidate and who's going to win overall? Yeah, it, look, it's about the election is decided in 10 states and it just matters who shows up more, people who like Trump or people who hate Trump. It re- I mean, there's no candidate in the whole Democratic field after a year of this. It's like everyone's like, like they were with Obama, you know, where they're really getting excited. Um, but he's right, Warren or Bernie yeah, have a negative I, effect. I mean, in the swing states, if you look at uh, Warren and Sanders, it's over. Trump wins, I think, pretty handily. I, I just know where I come from, Missouri. Their views are antithetical. I mean, free college for everyone. <laughs> where I'm from, a lot of people go, why are you going to college? <laughs> like, I mean, they're, they're like, uh, they do. They, I mean, there's... Yeah. there's Justifiably. Yeah, I mean, they're just like, I went to college, uh, I spent a fortune, and I run a landscaping business. Yeah. What the hell did I go $40,000 in debt for? And they have a legitimate sort of complaint to it. Uh, The idea that manufacturing is going to come back. Look, we have an opioid crisis out in that part of the country. Why? These are people that maybe don't have skills, don't have job skills, didn't get off the ground. Uh, that's a legitimate concern to them. And it's interesting, like the Trump administration identified it. They didn't do anything to solve it. They were just like, put Kellyanne Conway in charge of it or whatever, you know, like, but it's a serious issue. You could go to those states and go, hey, what's going on here? You got leading cause of death is opioid, you know, suicides in certain parts of the, the country right now. So what do you need to do to get them back on their feet? You know, if they're still unemployed or still in these places. And so if we're going to do manufacturing internally, it's going to be automation. Andrew Yang's right. Like he's one of the few ones, he's a fringe issue guy, but he's right. So maybe like a universal basic income that isn't like we're subsidizing everything they do, but we're keeping them from just wallowing out on the street. The homeless population outside of San Francisco right now, which is insane, here around New York City, incredibly you know high. You, there's more people out on the streets than ever. Look, we're the richest country in the world. You know how much opioids you can buy with $1,000 a month from the government? Sure, but I, huh. I'm just saying that yeah. it, it's a combination of things. There's no vision. When you listen to yeah. Trump or you listen to the Democrats, they don't really have like a vision for so your prediction? what it is. Trump? Uh, no, not necessarily. I think it'll be, I think it'll be Biden-Trump, and if uh, he signs a trade deal with China in the summer and the market goes to 35000 you know, who knows? I, that's Trump. I mean, I, look— who are the Democrats that have won the last three Democratic presidents? Obama. Obama, where is he from? Illinois. 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 Uh, where was Bill Clinton from? Arkansas. Arkansas. Uh, where was Jimmy Carter from? Georgia. So all three working class type. Yeah, and they were all from the Midwest or the South because you got to win a coalition. Look at that field. They're all... Obama's not working class type. He came from a family that was working class. Maybe. Nobody but knows had, that. He but he speaks in the, the language. Harvard he had appeal in the Midwest, though. Definitely in Missouri, where I'm from. Iowa, places like that. He won Missouri. Michigan. Yeah, I'm saying he won a huge swath. Look at who you're running right now. Who are you running? Biden, Delaware. Look, Slash Sanders, Pennsylvania. Sanders Warren, Yankee talk for Yankees. That's all you hear, right? Like when I hear it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bunch of East Coast mm. people. You know, on the other side, you're looking at like a Harris who's out there in California. What about Klo- Klobuchar? I, look, Klobuchar, I think, is a decent, you know, moderate candidate, but she doesn't have that punch, you know, when she's out yeah, on the Yeah, she's stage. not a galvanizing stump speaker. I'm, no, I'm and so they fr- don't know how to sort of fight with Trump you know, in the way that someone needs to, if they're going to be, you know, that I'm person. surprised you didn't mention Bloomberg at all. Bl- Bloomberg, like- another Yankee talking, you know, big regulations, B- big Yankee money talking, Yankee talk. Yeah. I big mean, money. It just, if you look at it, what else do you know about the Democrats? Were they 78 years old? Okay, so this killed No, me. Obama was what? He was in his late 40s. They used to be like, oh, look at him with his shirt off. Bill Clinton, he can play the saxophone. Jimmy Carter, oh, wow, he's youthful. He builds houses. Well, Car- Carter, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I think was a little bit of an anomaly because it was right after Watergate. You know, yeah. So, yeah. But, but, I mean, we got an impeachment right now. Like, yeah. I just think that the way the Electoral College map is sort of played out, you got to win a coalition. So l- let me, let's play Democratic strategist for a second, because it, it just, this, it looks like the only guy who can beat Trump is probably Biden. Yeah. So let's see, let's, let's take the chance of calling for witnesses in this impeachment trial. 
so that maybe you they call can, Biden or not, so maybe right? they can call Biden up there and we can just grill him on this obviously corrupt arrangement that he had uh, that is that his son had in Ukraine and also in the process let's get really, it all out let's no and not only expose that he has no answers because obviously there are, there are no good answers but let's also expose that he can barely string two sentences together yeah. because he's remember what happened to Mueller when he went spoke before congress i mean obviously this guy I was telling these guys i got chewed out on bill Maher for making an old people joke oh, about yeah. that <laughs> be careful i know i know i so, but so, it's obvious, right? They, they, 79, 78, 74, Noam. There's a one in three chance that any of those three guys, to include Trump, if they're elected, will just die in office of natural causes. I bet it'll be Biden. <laughs> I, mean, they, I, I mean, it could be. I, I mean, mean, look at Sa- Sanders. Sanders had a sharp. Sanders he, had a heart attack. He had a heart attack. But and he mine. hit the shower. I don't work. What? He hit his head in the shower. Sanders. That could happen to anybody. He took a punch, too, from a, from a speed bag. I don't, I, yeah. I mean, look. <laughs> but my point is this. That... that, that Biden is um, clearly not perfectly with it. And if you put him on the stand, now you're not going to remove, what are they trying to gain? You understand, like like strategically, they've gotten basically everything they're going to get out of this impeachment. They should they should be the ones who want to see it go away quick. They should be the one unless unless they really think that Bolton has some game changing information. He's just going to confirm what we already know. That's what I think. Then 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 I don't understand why they would risk having Biden take I, I, the Didn't stand. Adam Schiff cold, uh, throw cold water on that today? On what? On Hunter Biden. Uh, Adam Biden. Schiff has no say in it. Mm, okay. What do you mean? Mm. This is this is the Senate. This is the Senate, but I mean, I would have to think that he has some kind of like information about what's going on. He has no say. No, he has no actual uh, direct authority, but he's probably speaking for certain people in the party when he says that that wouldn't, that's not up for debate. Oh, that's <laughs> not up for debate. Listen, obviously we know. And you're going to and you're going to put him out there right before the Iowa caucus. It's crazy. It's just all yeah. great. It, we know that Hunter taking that job was corrupt. We know that Joe Biden knew that Hunter taking that job was corrupt. We know what it looked like, and what does Joe Biden do? He goes out and plays golf with the board members of Burisma. This is what happened. He's got to explain that while he's vice president. Oh, uh, Mr. Vice President, and apparently some people within the administration were asking about this, and they were told to drop the subject. You didn't. Nobody want. Nobody was allowed to talk about it. What's up with that? Apparently, you were briefing your witnesses for questions about this, so you were aware that this was a problem. Why didn't you take steps? I mean, he's got no good answers. Nobody's saying he broke the law. I'm not saying he broke the law. And then I'll tell you something else that I saw that, that I'm waiting for somebody to write about. Senator Elizabeth Warren yesterday says, announces, oh, let me pull back. So during, when I was writing like kind of like my um, defense of Trump, one of the arguments I had was that this could have been something that he could have run on in 2016. He could have said in 2016, if I'm elected president, not one more dime to Ukraine until we find out what happened with the Bidens and that. that, that. So I said, well, how can you impeach somebody for something they could have run on? What does Elizabeth Warren announce yesterday? When she's elected president, she is going to investigate Donald Trump for corruption. But he did the the same thing with Hillary. My point is that she is... um, Normalizing, or I don't know what the word is. She, she's she's carrying on the same behavior of investigating this is the your death political democ- opponent. Death of Democracy's book. Have you read that? And this is the they do a whole chapter on character when democracies die. Yeah. They just always investigate whoever oh, oh, was in right before. Yeah. So, That's so she, a very Latin American democracy kind of thing. Yeah. So she's kind of making it seem like, well, this is okay to do that. And then, and I, I really think this is going to come out in the impeachment. It nobody's commented on it, which means I'm probably out to lunch. But I, I want to say. That in that phone conversation, when Trump says it in the paragraph about the Bidens, he says, I want you to look into it. I want you to work with my attorney general. Meaning, to me, Trump is off the hook there because he, there was other times he talked about Giuliani. In the paragraph about Biden, he only talked about working with the attorney general, which would mean a proper investigation. He didn't suggest an illegal investigation. No, come on. The president abused his power, sending Giuliani out there, doing all this sort of stuff. 
He held up aid. <laughs> it's like, it's can, the can dumbest. I stop, can I stop you there for just one second? Yeah. Because I've said on this show, every every argument against Trump at some point comes down to, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's just. <laughs> Didn't I say that? Sure. Come on. You know, it's like, <laughs> it, it revealed to me just how little President Trump understands about the government. Look, what happens when you hold up however many millions of dollars of aid? The State Department guys are going to call and go, hey, man, what's going on? The defense attache is going to be like, dude, where are all the weapons for these Ukrainian guys? All the military guys. We have U.S. military people there are going to go, where are the javelins? I thought we were getting javelins. Yeah. The defense contractors of all these businesses that think they're well, getting that money are going to go, hey, where's our money for all He knows the Another thing uh, that will come up if, if, it, if they start actually getting to all the facts is that Mulvaney actually said that they were very aware of the date yeah. that they had to wrap this up by like they were kind of bluffing they knew they were going to have to release the aid by the 28th of september or something like that um and they knew it all along but my my point is that we only have the call to go on and the call says i want you to work with the attorney general and that is a big help to trump's case but he's obstructing on all other evidence and what obst what evidence he obstruct on People are not showing up. He's claiming an executive privilege. So on they should take him to court. Yeah, he's not the first. Should. He's they not should. the. That's, that's, that's. I never. He's not the first president to claim executive privilege. Obama declared executive <laughs> privilege during Fast and Furious. Sure. Nobody. Nobody wanted to impeach him for not it. Not during an impeachment hearing, though. Look, that you, you have this. All the more you have all the. I mean, if you have executive privilege to defend yourself, you don't have less of it during an impeachment hearing. Nobody thought. Oh, we have a procedure for this. The Nixon. Nixon didn't give up the tapes. Sure. He wasn't doing anything legal when he didn't give up the tapes. They took it to court. Nobody said he was obstructing justice. Then he took it to court. Then if he hadn't given up the tapes, then he would be committing a crime. But how can they, how can they attack him for saying, for declaring executive privilege? They, they should take it to court because, look, we need Why are they not? I don't know. I'm going to tell you something about impeachment. Uh, uh, that, that stinks about this whole thing. And this goes back to kind of a, where we started. They told us for a year that Mueller had laid out a roadmap for impeachment. They told us there were 11 counts of obstruction of justice that the Mueller report identified, all of which are criminal. Then the Ukraine thing dropped, and they told us for like three months, this is bribery. You know the phrase, high crimes, uh, bribery and treason, high crimes. And this is one of them. It's exactly what, bribery, bribery, bribery. So they told us for about a year or combined of about 13 different crimes the president has committed. We're going to impeach him. They get down to writing the articles of impeachment. They don't mention a single crime. They back off all 13 of them. What the fuck is that? What, what? What it says to like a common sense way is, I guess they didn't have the goods. So what do they resort to? They resort to abuse of power. What's abuse of power? I don't know, but we know when we see it. What the, what, who can define abuse of power? I mean, I guess if we all agree it is, then it is. But a law, say this is the law. This is, this is how we define the law. This is the precedent. Here are the other cases that have been decided. And you, and you, you can decide whether somebody's committed a, a crime or not. You can't decide whether somebody's abused power. You can't prove it. It's just a matter of opinion. I think it's over. No, I was here with you the last time I saw you. Yeah. And this is where I'll end on my impeachment discussion. I asked you, I said, what if we find out that the president held that back that money because he wanted dirt on Biden for political purposes? Yeah. And you were like, okay. That's yeah, I, I've, I've, you're right. I've changed. We have I've it in shape. We're going to play it right no, now. No, no, I've changed. On my opinion, I, I was too agreeable to this at first for, for a number of reasons. First of all, I thought that they would describe, they use the word smear all the time. And I, and I thought they were describing a kind of a real uh, uh, violation of Hunter Biden's constitutional rights, like trying to get uh, um, like a rendition. Like we can't investigate him, so you investigate him, use all your sleazy methods, just get us any dirt we can. It doesn't have to be true. That's what it sounded like at first. After they, that's what they presented it. That, that hasn't appeared to be the way it actually was. As a matter of fact, sometimes the Democrats self-destructively say, actually, all he wanted was the announcement as if they don't even think he even wanted the investigation. You've heard that argument for a while. So that comes, the Democrats throw that around without thinking it through that they're actually undercutting their own case. But so, but what I, what I failed to take into account on top of that is, does he have the right to investigate him or not? And 
it occurred to me, uh, he does have the right to investigate him. This, and if he has the right to investigate him, then you can claim it's opportun- opportunistic. But this goes same to your argument about Elizabeth Warren, which you just said. She, well, exactly. Can she be impeached for that? No. Is it an abuse of, was it an abuse of power? Obama told I, us. I don't know enough about the Hunter Biden situation when he did or what laws he might have. I'll describe it an abuse of power. Been. Obama told us in his own words for two years or more, maybe for more, maybe five years, I can't legalize the dreamers. I'm not a king. That's the exact word. I'm not a king. We have a democratic right. I can't legalize the dreamers. Then what does he do? He legalizes the dreamers. And it's illegal. The, the court actually knocks him down and says, you, 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 you can't do that. Was that an abuse of power? Yeah, of course it's abuse of power. Should he be impeached for it? No. Like presidents, uh, is, this, is this literally the first time a president has pushed the lines to so, win the next election so far that we think after 46 presidents is that is that it that this this is the worst thing a president has ever done this is the time a president is supposed to be it's pretty be, bad well he's not going to get impeached anyway so. he's not going compared yeah. compared to all the other things presidents have done with the FBI i mean it's, it's i don't know and they also made another mistake they they jumped the gun they should have actually waited a couple of weeks to see what he actually did. Because if he hadn't released the aid, then he wouldn't have, if he had held it up beyond that, then they'd actually have him do it. But why did he release the aid? Well, that's, we don't really know that. Which would mean we would need no, they say, witnesses. They say he released it because, the argument is that he released and it because he got caught. We would caught. need witnesses and evidence. No, I, I'm, I'm for the witnesses. Yeah. But I'm, I wasn't in charge of the house when they decided not to call them. They, they, and, and I think they should call them in the Senate. I mean, I don't sure. want, I don't believe in technical reasons for the truth not to come out, but I think it's ridiculous that they're blaming the Republicans. They, the House is supposed to investigate this. They rushed it along. They said they had no time. They didn't call witnesses. Then they sat on it for five weeks. I mean, there's nothing that makes sense. They said there were crimes. They didn't charge them with crimes. That, that, that is botched every way you look at it. But if, if I were to find out, somebody tell me, you know what, Bolton has, evidence i would never say well no the rules say he doesn't get to tell it we have to know it's it's um it's crucial for the american people to know exactly what really did happen we cannot suppress any evidence no matter what the procedural rules are so i'm 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 not on the side of suppressing witnesses but i am questioning whether or not you could make an argument for impeachment if you had to prove anything other than abuse of power because abuse of power has no definition. Have you heard anybody define it? Uh, no, but I think that's why we have 100 senators that get to vote in an impeachment trial about defining what the line of abuse of power is. I mean, I, I think that's what some of these things are supposed to establish about what those boundaries are. And well, that, for that's me, that's what the House was supposed to do. Yeah, the House and the Senate. I see Congress's role in that. I, here's where I'll conclude uh, there's two parts to this. Uh, one, the president shouldn't be going around using the elements of the government uh, to achieve his not. electoral victory. That's number one. Number two, I'm super disappointed in the Hill and the senators in the Hill of either party, it doesn't really matter what it is, who think it's okay to abdicate their responsibility for both oversight of foreign policy to a degree and their budget authority, which is the only reason that it's really there. That budget authority stuff, why do they want to sacrifice this over time? It's a super dangerous president for precedent for the president to be able to just say, you know what, I'm going to hold this money over here, even though it's approved for that. We're not going to send it out here. Um, I'm not going to back uh, the State Department and Defense Department. We're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. There's no orders, right? They, instead, they've got a guy named Giuliani running around with two guys at a car, you know, like parked outside of places, calling on unsecure phones. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, being in the government going, what am I supposed to be executing here? I thought my orders were to do this. And well, it's also all like, kind of absurd. I'm yeah. afraid that if Bolton testifies, he might actually help the president because I feel like he's going to just say how Giuliani just led this guy totally astray, which yeah. which is morally or it's going to make us feel like, you know, he, he was suckered rather than he was an evil genius or had an evil plot. Um because Giuliani, in these interviews, he really seems to believe all this crap. Like, he really seems to believe, like, it I think we just need more people in their upper 70s. Right? I was going to say that. Our, our, our country's future. All right, let's end it at that. <laughs> oh, like, did, Clinton, did Clinton bomb uh, Sudan to take the country's mind off Monica Lewinsky? Uh, 
I actually no, but I actually can't tell you uh, the reason why I don't think <laughs> that <laughs> off mic. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, there no. were. I mean, there were. Uh, yeah, there get, was, get him in trouble. He'll, he, I can't. I can't just betray national secrets on uh, on the mic. I'll right. tell you off mic. Well, he didn't <laughs> say I can that. tell you where. I, I can tell you where I was. That was the first time I had heard about Al Qaeda, and I was at uh, 101st Airborne Division. Yeah, at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. We <laughs> all know the first time we heard about Al Qaeda. Has a president? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm has a president? <laughs> I, I don't want to hear about, has, about your recruitment pitch. Has a president ever wagged the dog? As they sure, say, sure. Right. Is that not moving th- ships here or there, flying planes, and this and that for political purposes? Um, not election. Yeah, yeah. For I, le- well, that's what political purposes. No, but are. not. I don't not know to w- election. Any political purposes to, for an election? Mm, uh, I don't know. This so, feels kind of next level. <laughs> No, I'm saying, like what I'm saying is that I don't. He that, picked this, his rival. No, he said oh, this is the rival that I know could beat me. Let's get this conspiracy started in Ukraine. Well, I would. He could yeah, pick anything in the you, world to you do. You can say that, and you're you're right. But I, listen, I think this is actually a much more interesting argument than people want to give credit for it, which is that mixed motives are allowed. You can you can say. Holy shit, this how lucky am I? This corrupt vice president who they were even worrying about during his administration, he might be also running against me. Let's investigate him. I have oh, I have full ground. No. And 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 I'm not saying anything different than you're saying, but I'm saying that you cannot tell you can't tell him this. You could investigate him unless he decides to run against you, in which case uh, you're 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 precluded from investigating. You can investigate Joe Biden and all that mess in Ukraine as long as he doesn't throw his hat into the ring. In which case, you have to back off. You can't. That that doesn't hold. No, flying airplanes. Let's say a military demonstration or something like that. That is wildly different than you have a policy in Ukraine that you're executing through the elements of government which you're in charge of, and you've got this side operation going on with some guys, one who used to be the mayor, you know, trying to dig up dirt on your political opponent through a parallel diplomatic process, also involving all sorts of financial ties and entanglements. I don't know. It doesn't sound unprecedented to me. (laughs) I guarantee you the intelligence agencies, ours, were baffled as to why the Ukrainians must have been like, should I listen to this guy? Yeah. No, the holding Giuliani up the aid or Parnas or you know what's going on? Where's the aid? Are we getting aid? The what's holding up the aid sounds unprecedented to me, to be clear. Yeah. But this kind of intrigue of digging up dirt, it sounds very Sid Blumenthal to me, like over in Morocco or wherever it was that he was. You know, I, I, yeah, I, yeah they, they. I mean, I can only imagine the things. I feel, we feel. I feel like we've had pretty clean presidents in Obama and Bush, but definitely Johnson, Kennedy. Uh, Roosevelt, even those guys were up to whatever they could get away with. Yeah, but they didn't whatever know that they, they could get, get away caught. With. So uh, you know, uh, all I know is around the world we look pretty silly. Right oh, now. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's not so, uh, that's not impeachable. All right. Well, thank you guys. He's don't not going to get impeached. Don't no. download. I'm not going to be removed. I mean, okay. No, bye. 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 Uh, Stephen, you want to share your information? Stephen Calabria. Stephen with a P H C A L A B R I A on Instagram. Stephen yeah. with a P H, but no D. <laughs> Clint, sorry, Clint with a C, just a little joke. <laughs> and uh, oh, so- stop it, Stephen. Selected wisdom is Sele- my uh, Twitter handle. In a sulk. And uh, uh, <laughs> your book, uh, messing with the enemy. Do you have a website? Because I tried to find a website for you. No, I it's don't. time. It's time, man. Uh, well, I used to have one. It was called Selected Wisdom. That's where the handle came from. Twitter. Okay. Handle. Okay. And then it got knocked down. I don't know if it's hackers or I just. I'm follow Clint on Twitter. He always have something interesting and up to date. And uh, live from America podcast <sighs> dot com. No, I'm on Twitter or you don't tweet. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Push. Thank you very much and good night. I'm getting.